Well, good evening and welcome to our December 17th, 2019 West Gray Council meeting. All members of council are present. We do have a quorum. Uh, on our moment of reflection, if you're able to do so, please stand with me. Thank you. Members of Council, on item three, declaration of pecuniary interest, direct or indirect, are there any for this agenda? Thank you. Item four, closed session, we do not have any on this agenda. Matters arising from closed session on item five is an NA. On item six, comment period, I'm referring to the audience. Are there any members of the audience that have any questions uh, germane to this agenda? Seeing none, thank you very much for that. Item seven, as we move swiftly through the agenda, at least at this point, um, public meetings, there are none. Item eight, um, part one, consent agenda. I do have a motion before me. Moved by Councillor Hutchinson, seconded by Councillor Hamilton. Be it resolved that items A1 to A3 inclusive contained in part one, consent agenda be adopted as amended, and further that authorization be given to the action to be taken as may be necessary to give effect to the recommendations contained therein. Madam CIO, could you please um, refer to all of the amendments at this point? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this would be in reference to the December 17th agenda minutes. There were a few uh, post posting um, edits that were required. Uh, with apologies to um, our member of the audience, Ms. Gingrich, we will have your, your surname corrected. Uh, the other um, corrections are um, with the vision presentation by uh, Pat Morden. We had a glitch with our, our years. We were getting ahead of ourselves and behind. So we, it was in the fall of 2019 that the work the workshops began, not the fall of 2020. And we will be bringing it to the Committee of the Whole on January 28, 2020, not 2019. So we had a bit of a transposing there. Uh, my mistake, I thought that the um, the uh, canteen in the pavilion was affectionately known as the ball pen. It is the bullpen, so that's that's. Uh, now I learned something more about baseball. Okay. Um, the the one important clarification is the holiday hours of operation. Uh, we needed to um, indicate that on December 24th the office will be closed at noon. It closes at four o'clock every other day except the 24th, and that, Madam Mayor, was all of the important corrections. Great. Any other comments? Councillor Hutchinson. I just have one more correction. It's under the vision uh, session we had in Glenelg. Question one, page 25. Uh, it talks about permit, permit culture, and I believe that's permaculture. Right? Maybe you caught that. But, yes, uh, thank you. And, and indeed, that, I missed that on my list, but thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Councillor Herkert. On page 48, uh, mentions by my colleague here, uh, Councillor Stephen Townsend, as a community member on the library board. Mm -hmm. And I'm just not sure that the wording is right, but I, I would defer to somebody else to, make, to ensure that it is right. Thank you. Um, councillor Townsend would be uh, appointed as a councillor. Thank you very much for your sharp eye on that. And I, I see from Councillor Townsend the confirmation on that. So that will be amended, um, amended, but also carried forward through the library board, through our representatives. So thank you very much. Further comments, questions on the motion? All those in favour? Opposed, if any, carried. Okay. Thank you, Madam CIO. Well, that takes us over to part two, regular agenda. Uh, this is now item 10, communications from mayor and members of council. I'll be brief because it was a very, uh, very, very busy time period. Um, I do want to mention that uh, Gray County Council had their inaugural and um, Paul McQueen, who is the mayor of Gray Highlands, is now the warden for Gray County. I attended uh, many things, including the Women's Institute, Centerville Chapter, a Christmas lunch. Um, also, there um, was a reading for Wab Rice uh, that the uh, library um, hosted. And I attended the winter market by the Saugeen uh, Trading Community. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton, for the invitation uh, on that. Uh, there were many tree lightings and parades, but the lightings were in uh, tree lightings for Elmwood, Durham, and Neustadt and Ayton, and um, parades in Neustadt and uh, Durham. 
I also attended the Chris Kringle Market and the Aiton Seniors Group. Uh, there was also the Durham Horticultural Potluck. It just is illustrative of all the community events that go on within West Gray. And I do want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So I said I'd be short and concise. With that, Deputy Mayor, please. Thank you, Mary Roberts, and I will uh, keep this short as well so we move things along. Uh, I, too, uh, actually, I was the, uh, the driver for the, uh, for the parade, for, oh, right. for both parades. Yeah. I, it was my job, so anybody looking for me on the floor, I was in the heated cab, <laughs> having a hot toddy. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, and it did to get out and celebrate the tree light, but um, I just want to wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year as well, and all the best of uh, health and happiness during the whole and into 2020. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Councillor Shea, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, likewise, I attended many of those events. Uh, at two of them, I had the pleasure of performing with the sauntering band at the Crystal Market and the Durham Tree Lighting, so it was kind of fun as well. Um, I also wanted to report that um, <clears throat> I applied to and was accepted to uh, be working on the AMO Waste Management Task Force. Uh, meets three times a year. Uh, first meeting is in February. So um, I'll be going to Toronto to represent uh, West Gray's interests there. Part of the uh, agenda of that task force is to sort of lobby up to the uh, provincial government. So being on the Waste uh, Reduction Subcommittee here, I think that it will help um, us in working with our citizens in the local community, working with the local government and staff at this level, working with the county at that level, and now additionally working with the province. So hopefully I can put my best for foot forward and try and make uh, waste reduction happen here in West Cray. Well, congratulations, Councillor. I think that is uh, something to be proud of. Councillor Herger, please. That is something to be proud of. Congratulations. Um, we have uh, a lot of Christmas holiday things that we, events we've been going to, and thank you for all the volunteers that have come out and made uh, a big effort in our community to put on these events for our families and friends and get togethers with neighbors. It's really wonderful. Uh, just wanted to highlight a few things. This last week we've had a meeting, um, I would call it our best work so far, regarding bridges and asset management. And in the new year we're going to be taking up uh, a wholesome report on, on bridges and, and working with Thank our you. new director on that. So pretty good news out of West Gray. We're getting to these big challenges. Um, also when we come back in the new year, it's budget January 10, 7th and 10th. So so keep your eyes peeled for those agendas. Um, as well, Grey Bruce Farmers Week is in Elmwood the first week of January. So I'll see you there. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Very good, thank you. Councillor Townsend, please. Yeah, again, it sounds like we, a lot of us were at the, the same events. I was not sure. on the West Grey Parade though, because I was um, sort of sh shuttling back and forth with two grandsons who actually got to lead the parade in the police car. Yeah. And that was uh, something that uh, the wife and I managed to get from the silent auction at the um, gala for the uh, hospital foundation. It's so it's those kind of things that you can also do to help uh, the hospital as well as support the community. So, um, but the other thing was uh, Breakfast with Santa was last week and that was uh, really a great success. And that's at the country corner, bring your kids every year, it happens. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, on Saturday, the Lions held a thank you slash Christmas dance. Um, the, uh, there was no charge to get in. The fee was really whatever you wanted to donate. And it was a full house, so it was really, really um, a success from their perspective. And the more they got, the more they felt that they were hearing the thank you. And that was what the purpose of the event was. Um, I also attended the Aiton Senior Group. I've joined that group because I qualify age-wise. And it's a great, uh, great bunch of people that are looking to do things around. So it's... Uh, it's um, a monthly meeting they have. Uh, they have it in the Centennial Hall in Aiton, and uh, you actually have groups that prepare the meals, and it's, uh, you get to participate in that as well. So that should be fun going forward. Mm -hmm. So again, I'll also wish everybody a Merry Christmas and uh, enjoy the season and celebrate it the way your culture uh, indicates you should. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Townsend. Councillor Hutchinson, please. <coughs> Yeah, I'd just like to uh, thank everyone for taking part in all the activities that went on in this uh, festive season. Um, we have lots of uh, Christmas lights out there now too that add to the uh, season, so that's great that um, we've made some additions there. Uh, I'd like to make mention to one activity that um, uh, was put on by the Durham Recreation uh, Committee, which is called the Durham Recreation, or West Gray 
Recreation uh, Family Christmas, and they um, they gave out gifts and whatnot. People had to apply, but I think they gave out 70 presents to families that came and took part in that and did some skating, and and uh, that was held at the the um, Dur Marina. So that was very successful. I'd also like to shout out to um, Cody Hewitt, who's our recreation um, staff, and um, he's done a great job of, of being in every place, uh, uh, helping out, getting things organized, getting the lights up, making sure the activities took place, and uh, so he's did a he did a great job. So he's been a great addition to the staff, uh, Cody, and um, he's not here, but I'm sure he'll hear about it, and uh, I'd like to congratulate him. Otherwise, I'd just like to wish everyone Merry Christmas and uh, safe and happy holidays, and we'll see you next year. Great. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hamilton, please. What is there left to say? <laughs> I'm sure there's lots for you. <laughs> Took the words of my mouth, but it has been very busy and I enjoyed attending all four different Christmas events across West Gray and thanks to our staff and our volunteers for putting up the lights and decorating the trees and the bridge baskets and the parades. It's, it's just been a wonderful celebration. So wishing everyone a very Merry Christmas, thinking of those who work over the holidays in our hospitals and keeping our roads plowed and to all our staff working so hard. Thank you and, and happy holidays. Thank you very much. Uh, just before we leave this item, I do want to say that at the Chris Kringle, Mar Chris Kindle Market, I did receive a star and I just wanted to show that uh, to everyone. So I was quite pleased to receive that. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, so on item 11, delegations, we do not have any listed for today. Item 12, business arising from previous meetings. Councillor Herger. So I noticed we have a member in the audience that has uh, brought an item before regarding uh, Bill 132. And I know that was in our minutes of our meeting on November 26. Mm -hmm. I recognize that has received uh, royal consent now and we're moving ahead. Um, just curious, um, how in the future we'll be monitoring these items or the environmental registries that come up and the, the feedback that the province has continuously been asking for for the last year. So I, I know that, that that bill in particular, omnibus bill, covers several different uh, pieces of legislation. Yes. But I am curious how we are going to monitor that in the future. Um, so, so we have that proactive. Sure. As, as we, uh, we talked about, I believe it was at Committee of the Whole, we've got a, a few different outlets um, to address the, um, the pending items coming through, and whether it's AML Watch or through some of our professional associations that either uh, our professional staff belong to, and also the connect that, um, that the deputy and I have at the county. So I would uh, suggest that as we um, hear of um, bills that it would be addressed through our Committee of the Whole, through uh, a report, and then we can comment or take the appropriate action. Okay. And, and to that point, I know that at AMO, we actually, we spoke up and said, can you give us more than two months? Because yeah. this one hit the, hit the books two months ago, and now it's already received the royal assent. So mm -hmm. for that time, for us to coordinate here at this office and, and explain that local level and the impact that it has, it really is not very much time at all. So sure. let's all keep a keen eye to that, and we'll get those through to the Committee of the Whole. Yeah, and we're also connected with our MPP, Bill Walker, and uh, we'll just have to amplify that when, we're, uh, when we have an opportunity at the various conferences to uh, readdress that with our uh, ministers that, as we have those conversations. Okay, anything else on item 12 before I move on? Councillor Townsend, please. Uh, yes, I've reported to Council uh, previously about the car in the river in Aiton, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I took on the challenge of trying to see if we could actually get that removed. Um, I'm happy to, to um, uh, announce that the uh, Minister of the Environment, uh, in conjunction with the Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority, um, are issuing a pre-order that has now been uh, designed and approved by both parties uh, to have that uh, removed and get the proper access through the right properties to make that happen. So I can't say when it's going to happen, but I can say the right authorities are actually moving forward to get it out, where before it was sitting almost a year before anything happened. So I just thought Council should right. know that. No, thank you very much for that update. Further? All right, we're moving on to item 13, which is staff reports. The first one that we have is a report from our administrative assistant. This one is dealing with um, deferral of bylaws for keeping of hands and zoning bylaw amendment. Madam CAL, would you please address this? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Council, you will recall that uh, at the November 19th Council meeting, we, had, we sought a deferral 
hoping that we would be able to bring it back this evening. Uh, I need a little bit more time with the clerk to work on this on this particular file, so I'm proposing that we would bring it back early 2020, likely the, the Committee of the Whole in February. Okay. Is there any discussion? Uh, do I have a yeah. motion before me? Oh, thank you. Here it is. Moved by Councillor Hergert, seconded by Councillor Townsend, be it resolved that the Keeping of Hens bylaw and the zoning bylaw amendment be deferred to a future meeting in early 2020. Comments, questions? On the motion, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, it does carry. Thank you very much for the update, Madam CAO and Administrative Assistant. Um, appreciate that. All right. Now we have two reports from our Director of Finance and Treasurer. The first one is dealing with voucher number 22 2019. Uh, Director Mighton, because it is of a high amount, would you mind just identifying what that would be associated with? Um, yep, so this uh, voucher, because we only had one council meeting um, in the month of December, it does include two vouchers, so that's one. Uh, but it also in there is the Gray County and School Board levies, so that's just over $2.2 million um, and a property purchase. Uh, one of them is in there, so that makes up $2.4 million. Um, and then the balance is sort of regular accounts, but it does represent two separate vouchers that uh, you're approving tonight. Comments? Councillor Hutchinson. Um, I have a couple questions. Go ahead. Um, so uh, maybe this is for our Director of um, Public Works. The in Bentic, they had a wood pile um, that was being moved or something to do with it, and it cost $8,000. I'm just curious, what, what was that job that was done? They were brought in a rock truck, apparently. So can you explain that, mm -hmm. what that was about? Uh, uh, you, through uh, Your Worship, uh, that uh, expense it was for equipment rentals out at the landfill site uh, to move um, the uh, wood waste pile. Okay. So is that the pile that they, they mulch up and use for a cover? And that, that yes. Pile? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, and the other one was, um, I just want to make a note about um, groundwater surface water testing on our landfills. Um, if you noticed it, that it was in there. I was in around page 90 somewhere, but between the landfills that we have in Gunnell, which is now a one that's closed, it costs about $8,000 at this point in time. Now, I don't know whether that's an annual, I've forgotten whether that's an annual or biannual that they do that testing. Maybe our director can tell us that, or maybe, maybe uh, finance can help out with that question. But how often do we have that tested? Is it just you? Uh, your Worship, uh, that's, that's an annual, <coughs> that's an annual uh, test. So that amount would be for, that amount would occur every year. Right, okay, so it's one time a year. But I just want people to be aware that even though our landfills, even with uh, Ganel, even though it's closed, it still costs us money. Because we have to test the groundwater, the surface water, and, and the ones that are still open, we test them on a regular basis. So $8,000 a year just for, just for testing the water, uh, the runoff from those landfills. So that's something to keep in mind when we look at you know, cost and how much it costs to run our landfills. It, it does cost us quite a bit of money. And the other question I had was, um, I can't remember this came come up, and, and maybe we, maybe I missed it, but in our new subdivision on Durham Road East, um, there doesn't seem to be any street lights, and I'm not sure, I know the hydro's not in yet, uh, I'm not sure in our plan whether we, I don't remember seeing or talking about street lights and what kind of lights they're putting in for that subdivision, do, do we know? Uh, through your worship, uh, I... I have. Uh, I am not certain at this point. However, um, I can report back to council with uh, those uh, details that are in the uh, in the um, the design uh, with respect to uh, street lighting standards. Right. I realize that wasn't in um, our report. Of just when I was looking at cost of street lights, which does cost us money to keep them running, um, that I, I thought. Hey, I don't remember seeing anything on the, the new sub development, so it might be worthwhile checking out and see what, what's the plan there. Yes, very worthy questions. Thank you. Anything further? Councillor Herger. On page 68, it talks about Gray Bruce Trash Taxi uh, picking up at Newstat Hall. And I guess I was curious why we use them when our main provider that we have a contract with would be waste management. I'm not sure if there's something special, maybe they don't cover that area. I'm not sure why that is, mm -hmm. but I'll leave that with staff, just a question in general. Okay. Um, also, I have um, 
Just, just a comment that I would like to make. I'd like to encourage all of our staff to be buying local. And I noticed that some of the vouchers are outside and, and there's certain times we just can't buy local. And I know that that is not exactly in the wording of our procurement bylaw, but we might, uh, we might put some wording to a procurement bylaw that would encourage that real local. Is it maybe not as competitive that way? So there's a few things on okay, that. Okay, First, I'm interested. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know this is often a learning environment, yeah. so this is Perfect. a really good example of that. Firstly, we do try to buy as local as possible, but within a procurement bylaw, it really uh, sets a bias that way, and you want to uh, ensure that uh, we maintain a competitive nature. And we certainly have the criteria by which um, our bids and our quotes are um, measured against, but we do want to keep that competitiveness. Can you say that much, much better than I have, Director, <laughs> yeah. please? Um, and it, there would be grounds if we use that as a criteria for assessing it, there would be grounds for someone to sue us because uh, of the purchase if we only based it on local. It's, it's in all, you can't do that. Okay. Yeah, oh, no, no trouble at all. It, it is absolutely worthwhile. Comments, questions, concerns? Well, then I do have a motion uh, before me, moved by Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, seconded by Councillor Shea. Be it resolved that the Director of Finance and Treasurer be authorized to pay the accounts presented in Voucher 22-2019 in the amount of $3,320,662.35 of the Municipality of West Gray. On the motion, all those in favour? Opposed, if any, carried. Director Mighton, you have one further report, and that is, just me, I have it tabbed here. This is the year-end supplemental uh, assessment and write-offs. Uh, yeah, so that's just our um, total. It includes um, new property or new builds that have uh, been added to the roll. It may be multiple years um, if we picked it up for two or th two to three years worth of taxes. So it's not just an annual uh, amount. That's what we've collected this year. But if it was a new home that we picked up for two two prior years plus the current year, um, so but that is what our total is for uh, for this year. Comments, questions? Okay, very good on this one. Okay, Councillor Townsend then. For the benefit of the public, could you explain exactly um, whether it's money's received, whether it's um, monies that we're writing off because we don't expect to collect? Good question. Um, we always expect to collect taxes, as every good <laughs> rate payer will, will pay. Um, so these are new bills. Um, it's not necessarily that uh, um, the receivable side of it, it's just this is what we have billed for the for new uh, assessment or for write-offs uh, for anyone who has appealed their assessment and had a change to decrease their assessment value as well. Um, so it's not to say that uh, um, we have avenues that if they chose to um, not pay that we can pursue it, but um, it is assumed that we will collect all of that. Okay, further? Councillor Hamilton, then. Uh, Director Main, does this go into reserves after we collect it or? Um, so this will just make up part of your surplus or deficit at the right. end of the year. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. Then, yeah. So that uh, is some new, uh, we do budget for uh, a bit of growth in a, in a given year. Um, so it's just, it'll kind of help buffer that. Okay. Kelsey Herker. Yes. Is there a, a way that you can explain just the uh, S357, Minutes of Settlement, ARB, Legion Write-Off, Vacant yeah. Unit Rebates, please. Yep, uh, Section 357 um, is under the, uh, the Act, the Assessment Act, um, so that would be if there's been a fire, as an example, um, the, uh, the building has been raised by fire, we will submit that um, so that the assessment value with that structure is taken off the property um, on there. Minutes of Settlement is someone who has uh, actively appealed their assessment. Um, the, and I should say ARB is the uh, Assessment Review Board, um, so that's the formal appeal. Minutes of settlement is the first step that they would take to see if we they MPAC and the homeowner can come to a resolution um, for the uh, whatever issue they've brought forward that they feel their assessment is, is not fairly assessed. Um, the legions um, under the uh, Municipal Act, um, we can write off the municipal portion of the legion tax bill 
because of the specific veterans uh, nature there and vacant unit rebates is a program that we still have um, we are looking at if the minister opens that up again that the county will apply for um, to phase that out or or in some fashion that will have to be determined but um, but currently we do still have the vacant unit rebate for commercial and industrial properties further members of council all right i have a motion moved by councillor hamilton seconded by Councillor Hutchinson, be it resolved that the Council of the Municipality of West Gray approves the supplemental, supplemental omitted taxes and write-offs in the amount of $167,476.28 and $171.13 for local taxation and BIA area rates, respectively. Comments? All those in favor? Opposed, if any, carried. Thank you. All right, thank you. So now that takes us over to our Director of Infrastructure and Public Works. Uh, this report is dealing with winter maintenance level of service policy, options for sidewalk uh, winter maintenance. Director, please. Good evening. Good evening, Your Worship, members of Council. Um, uh, as uh, directed, um, there was a uh, council has re requested that um, that a um, that I come back with a report to uh, support option one in the um, um, uh, winter maintenance policy, which uh, more specifically describes the uh, winter control operations on all sidewalks in. Uh, the municipality of West Gray. Um, for the benefit of the public, we are currently maintaining sidewalks in the winter in the communities of Durham, um, Eaton, and Newstead. Uh, in Eaton, we're just uh, plowing the main uh, street. So essentially um, what this would do, uh, if approved, um, would allow um, uh, staff to um, acquire the appropriate uh, machinery and uh, seasonal staff to um, undertake winter control um, activities on all the sidewalks in West Gray. And uh, essentially, um, um, as far as a vi the viability aspect of it, um, um, with option one, it would be to uh, some new uh, information as well, is that equipment can be um, rented and or leased. Um, so there was uh, some concerns that were brought up with respect to the uh, capital um, purchase uh, of sidewalk equipment. And um, uh, uh, to, to further support option one, um, there are uh, a number of options uh, that um, that staff can take to uh, acquire <coughs> rented or leased equipment uh, to begin this operation. Okay, that concludes your, your presentation at this point? Essentially, yes. Very good, all right, open up for questions. Councillor Hutchinson. Okay. Yeah, thank you uh, for your work on this. Uh, I like the idea of the rent, rent to own uh, because uh, that gives us one year that we can sort of see how things work and whatnot. My, uh, just thinking, uh, one of my concerns is do we have contractors now that are already under contract that, that may be affected by that if we start to do our own plowing? Um, there's no contractors in place right now for sidewalks? Uh, uh, through your worship, uh, we do have... Um, we do have a contract right now uh, with um, a contractor in the community of Newstead. Um, however, uh, we do not, to the best of my knowledge, have contractors in Elmwood and or Eaton um, or Durham that are plowing sidewalks. So we will not be in conflict of any other um, contracted services. So we would keep the Newstead contractor on for this year until we see how things go? Uh, through your worship, yes. Thank you for that. Councillor Shea, please. Thanks for this uh, update. Uh, it seems like a really attractive option that you've presented to us. Um, um, in the description of this piece of equipment in the addendum that you provided, it's described as uh, 34 inches wide, allowing access to the tightest access of any property. 
I think you indicated that uh, some of the sidewalks in Durham were not accessible due to guy wires and uh, protruding uh, retaining walls and things like that. Does that fall under tightest uh, access to uh, any property? Uh, through your worship, um, essentially um, uh, that would, the 34 inches with this particular piece of equipment would be able to uh, travel underneath those um, uh, uh, guy wires uh, and um, uh, so essentially um, the person that's on that machine can safely get underneath there and there's no um, um, how would you say there's no cab or protruding ROP system that would catch that um, however um, even if other um, narrow equipment was used that would at least do the sidewalks and if it were to get to that point where it would go underneath those guy wires, then we would look at flagging those for safety reasons and uh, work around it. Um, so, so I understand the priority is eight, and uh, with uh, Elmwood being a quite a high priority as well uh, as underserved communities. Uh, are we imagining trucking this piece of unit, uh, piece of equipment to Newstat and Durham if necessary, or is that just too much moving of the equipment? At this particular point in time, um, uh, the plan is to have uh, this uh, narrow, this piece of equipment that can do narrow sidewalks stationed in uh, in Elmwood, and essentially, I um, we could plow all the sidewalks in Aiton using the existing trackless unit that we have. However, um, anywhere um, where the sidewalks are narrow. Um, staff could um, use, I mean, in, in certain instances, for example, like the bridge in Eden has got a very, very narrow walk. And it's very difficult to get a piece of equipment across the bridge to make sure that the walk is clear. That may be a situation where staff will actually have to clear that walk by hand and or use other um, other means to, uh, to, clear the, to clear the snow off of the bridge. So there are going to be some certain areas in, with, uh, throughout the municipality that are, gonna, um, gonna, that are gonna be challenges. However, I'm confident with the staff that we have that we will be able to overcome those challenges and that with uh, the equipment that we, that we acquire, um, that uh, as those challenges, uh, we're, we're doing everything we can to anticipate any of those challenges that come up, I'm not trying to overcomplicate this, but uh, as they do come up, we will, um, uh, I'm confident that we'll have the means to address them and, uh, and fulfill the level of service that uh, council is after. Okay, I think we're definitely making a step in the right direction. I'm look, very much looking forward to clearer sidewalks this winter, and maybe we can review at the end of the winter to see uh, if there are any further steps we want to take. Thank you. Very good and well said, Councillor Councillor Townsend, please. Yeah, I just wanted to congratulate the director. I know that we uh, gave him quite a challenge with some of the yes. options, not having the capital and also um, being very expensive if we went third party. And I think you've come up with a solution that uh, will give us the, I think, full uh, sidewalk coverage for the rest of uh, the 1920 uh, winter once you uh, get the equipment on site. So can you confirm that's in fact the case, all the sidewalks will be done? Uh, yes. Thank you. That was the goal that we asked our director to do and thank you for the clarification that, for putting that question out. Councillor Hamilton and then Councillor Herger. Yeah, thank you for all your work on this and, and renting seems like a, a great place to start, like a nice tri trial period. I was just wondering if we, if we had the cost of renting it for this season. The, the cost to rent um, is uh, $2,000 a month um, and I've uh, sourced out uh, two or three different uh, types of equipment and the uh, um, just to be thorough and uh, the prices range from 12 to 1500 a month and, uh, and up but in this particular case it's uh, 2000 a month good thank you Councillor Herger please wonderful where are we at? Are we ready for the motion? Oh, not just yet. Councillor Hutchinson, please. Yeah. Just one more question. For sure. Um, so, um, obviously with the costs, most of this cost is going to probably hit next year's budget. Um, 
But I'm just wondering with the seasonal staff, um, you're looking at uh, hiring one full-time seasonal staff, which will obviously hit budget for next year. Is that correct? Uh, through your worship, yes, that's, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, further, if anything? Sure, Councillor Townsend. Uh, just an afterthought about um, the assaulting and sanding. Uh, you had talked in the original equipment that we would purchase, we would have those features. Will we still have those features on the, the rental home option? Uh, that's correct. Okay. Good. Anything further? Because this is a moment in time here, very significant. So moved by Councillor Hutchinson, seconded by Councillor Hamilton. Be it resolved that the Council of the Municipality of West Gray adopts option one contained in the Council Report, Director of Infrastructure and Public Works, Winter Control Policy dated December 17, 2019, to meet the minimum maintenance standards for municipal highways for sidewalk maintenance. Comments? On the motion, all those in favour? Opposed, if any? Carried. And I do want to note that was carried unanimously. Director, thank you very much. Uh, a lot of hard work on this, uh, a lot of detail in a very short period of time, but it's, uh, it's achieving what we need for our West Gray citizens. So again, well done. Okay, that, members of council, takes us off staff reports. We are now on item 14, which is bylaws. And I'm looking for the first one with regard to the first proposed bylaw. Moved by Councillor Hamilton, seconded by Councillor Hutchinson. Be it resolved that bylaw number 100 2019, being a bylaw to appoint citizens to various committees of the Corporation of the Municipality of West Gray in the County of Gray, and in brackets, repeals bylaw number 88 2019, end of bracket, be now read a first, second, and third time, passed and numbered, and that the said bylaw be signed by the, mayor and clerk, uh, by the mayor and deputy clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and engrossed in the bylaw book. Comments, questions? Yes, Councillor Hutchinson. Um, I'm just curious why mm -hmm. the hard copy, is it different than the copy that we have on our agenda? Yeah, that's a very good point. Okay. Thank you very much. Would you like to address that, Madam CIO? Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank yeah. you for the question, Councillor. The uh, copy that is on our website and that is before you includes the West Great Traffic Safety Working Group appointments, uh, so that it's just, it's just that it's been updated to include our um, newest volunteers. So I'm going to put as amended. Yes, thank you. Uh, and thank you, Councillor Hutchinson, for uh, uh, yes, Councillor Hutchinson for that. Councillor Hamilton, as the mover, with the word um, as amended, and Councillor Hutchinson, you're good as a seconder. Any other comments, questions, Councillor Shea, please. I wonder if uh, the CAO knows if these uh, committees are now full, um, because I believe our general bylaw is five to thirteen, and some of these have four, but some have specific numbers and, and thank you for the question councillor that in fact there the Durham <coughs> Recreation Committee only has four members so we will be doing a advert will include them in the January advertising for more members because our minimum is five uh, the committee doesn't have a meeting plan for um, until February so we're hope we can get some new members at that committee um, I, I noticed uh, Durham Cemetery has four is that uh, I have to recall I don't know if the Durham Cemetery is under the same uh, terms of reference as our advisory yeah. committee, so I think that that one is fine. Yeah, as a board. Yeah. Yes, thank you. We'll, we'll double check further, Councillor Shea. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Um, I did duly read this, so I'm just going to call on the um, the vote for this. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. It does carry. So, oops, oops. thank you. <laughs> All right, so for the next, sure, we're pretty coordinated on this. So um, moved by Councillor Hutchinson, seconded by Councillor Hamilton. Be it resolved that bylaw number 101-2019, uh, being a bylaw formulating a plan for the protection of property and the health, safety, and welfare of the inhabitants of an emergency area, in brackets, repeals bylaw 27-2004, End of bracket. Be now read a first, second, and third time, passed and numbered, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and deputy clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and engrossed in the bylaw book. Comments, questions? Councillor Townsend. Yeah, I'm pleased to say that there were a few um, remaining uh, changes to be made since it uh, came to committee of uh, the whole, and all those have been made, so I'm quite pleased to see that. Thank you very much, and thank you for your, everyone's participation, but certainly appreciate uh, the time on it, Councillor Townsend. 
Anything further on the motion for the bylaw? All those in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried. Okay, so that's one more. One or two. Thank you. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, seconded by Councillor Shea, be it resolved that bylaw number 102-2019 be in a bylaw to establish a level of service for winter maintenance policy on West Gray roads, parking lots and sidewalks. In brackets, repeals bylaw 114-2017 be now read a first, second and third time, passed and numbered, and that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Deputy Clerk, sealed with the seal of the Corporation and engrossed in the bylaw book. Comments, questions? On the motion, all those in favor? Opposed to any? It carries. Thank you. This is the confirming. Beautiful. Uh, moved by Councillor Herger, seconded by Councillor Townsend, be it resolved that bylaw number 103 2019 be in a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the November 26, 2019, and the December 17, 2019 meetings. Be now read a first, second, and third time, passed and numbered, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and deputy clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and engrossed in the bylaw book. Comments, questions? On the motion, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? Carries. So that concludes our bylaws. On item 15, new business. <coughs> all right, thank you very much. Uh, there are no addendums, is that correct, Madam CIO? Thank you. Uh, on item 17, notice the motion, direct motions. Madam CEO, you're not aware of any. So I just look to the left and my right. Thank you, members of council. 18, closed session, but that was a dealing with incomplete items only. That is an NA. Item 19 will also be an NA because it is dealing with matters arising from the closed session, but the incomplete items only. So we are moving on to item 20, question period. Members of the audience, are there any questions germane to the agenda this evening? Thank you very much. Municipal Act notices under item 21, Madam CAO. There are none. I'm looking for the um, last adjournment uh, and our last vote for our council meeting. Deputy Mayor had his hand up, Councillor Townsend. On the adjournment, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, carried. Again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. This is our first, first year, members of council. Thank you.